All right, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to today's video. We're gonna be doing some chest, some pulling, some pushing. It's upper body day. It's gonna be our high volume day of the week. So it is Monday. So pretty much we're gonna be doing the most amount of volume for the week. So a lot of sets of 17 after the bench press. Uh, yesterday was refeed day. So hopefully we're gonna get a pretty solid pump today. Very excited. Um, we're starting off with some bench press and I think we're a little bit under 19 weeks out from the main competition. So hopefully there's a vein or two new. But we're gonna get started warming up with the bar right now. It feels really good, just at 20 reps. And then we're gonna get into working sets, which are gonna be probably heavy set of, I think, four, and then followed by sets of eight. Let's do it. So we just worked up to a heavy set of 275. It'll be going for four. Ideally, this would be an RP8. So we're gonna see how this one goes. But my wrist has been feeling fine throughout, so let's see. So we made a slight change to the workout routine. Instead of doing like weighted pull-ups, where I'm hitting like three to five reps, giving these a try. We're gonna be doing the assisted pull-ups. So yes, I've been training 10 years and we're gonna do assisted pull-ups, so get your ego out of there. Um, no matter what your training level is, it may be a good idea to use these. I um, got them from Mike Isertel. Um, so the main thing, the reason to maybe consider these is you can get into the higher rep ranges with pull-ups if you're not the best at pull-ups. And also you can probably control your technique a little bit better. So we're taking off 50 pounds, and I think we're gonna go for sets of 15. Also, the good thing about this is I'm really gonna be emphasizing the full range of motion and trying to get all the way up. When we do pull-ups, you're just trying to get your chin over the bar. So I'm gonna be doing the five sets of this, and uh, I've already been feeling it really good in my lats, which to me is a weak spot. Feels good except like the one thing with this is the assisted like hits the top when I'm like trying to get that full lockout. So do with what you can. Uh, so we'll be doing these, but it is really isolating my back, getting the higher rep ranges and controlling it a lot better than I could without the assistance. So really enjoying these and it's a good way for us to spice it up a little bit. All right, so we dropped it down to 255 pounds. It's gonna be going for sets of eight. They should be paused. So we'll be trying to pause them. We'll see how difficult this is gonna be. And we're gonna be doing four sets of this. Um, so it's gonna be five total bench sets and we're also do five total pull-up sets. My back is feeling really good after those pull-ups though. Like really good isolation, definitely give them a try because that control is gonna go a long way in 
actually hitting your lats instead of just counting pull-ups. We've survived three sets of the bench, hit all the reps so far. And uh, my back, like, these pull-ups, I think it's, because they're so good, I'm realizing how uh, not good everything else has been for me, maybe. Um, I can activate my lats so well on those that it's like the pure limiting factor is my lats. I just get that full stretch, full contraction, when I don't think I'm that, it's all me. I'm not that good at isolating all my lat pull-downs, non-assisted pull-ups or even like my rowing motion. So definitely, definitely give those a try. Um, I don't think I've had a back pump like this, but we're gonna focus on our chest first, finish out this strong, hit another set of eight, and then we're gonna finish up one more with those assisted pull-ups. talk we just finished one punch man season two that was really really good all right to the set no, <laughs> was, one punch man season one it was just like it's like a fun it's satirical it's like a funny anime and it's like not taking itself too serious and then the second season actually has some good storyline to it it's pretty funny and then also like it's he's just a beast yeah it's like legit like besides one punch man being like overpowered it's like the other people have a legit storyline but then he just comes in like one punch man um, really good stuff if you're into anime. Jeebus, that was awesome. That's super set number one, and now we're gonna get into the seal rows and the incline press. After our mangos. All right, so next up we're doing the dumbbell incline and the seal row. We've been doing these for a good amount of time, so they're not changing with this training block, but I'm making a little bit more of an effort with the dumbbell incline to really focus on bringing it back even deeper to get a really good stretch on the chest. Notice that last time it makes it like a good amount diff more difficult, but I'm feeling a lot more, of course, in my chest because you're getting a little better stretch. Um, so definitely try that one out, but you're probably gonna have to bring the reps down a little bit, the amount that you can move. This is another thing I stole from uh, Mike Isertel and Jared Feather. They were saying just pretty much everything, and this goes for all hypertrophy training, um, make sure you're getting that full range of motion, and that's gonna pay off a lot more than if you're lifting like a lot heavier weight, just always lifting with your ego. So we're throwing that in, get a good chest pump.
We only got 16. But yeah, that extra stretch really will do you in. So I may have to drop the weight, or we'll see if I can hit 17 on this next set. But um, switching to seal ropes. Does it for the super set? Next up, we got lap pull downs. We're actually switching up the chest movement, which was like close grip, which is kind of more of a tricep movement. Because of the rest, we're giving that some time to chill out. We're gonna do a really direct chest movement because I've never really done too much chest isolation. So we're gonna do some low to high flies. It's also a really quick super set because they're right next to each other. All right, so superset number three, we have the neutral grip, which I'm really enjoying. So we have neutral grip pull downs, we're also gonna superset this with um, the flies, so cable flies. They have the cable fly machines here, so there's a cable thing. Come on, we'll talk about it. There's the cable flies that you could do here, but like where it starts, is resistance gonna be here. So you can't really get a full, full stretch as much as you could if they were coming from the opposite directions. It's really the force you're pulling in that direction. This one, and the force is gonna be kind of pinched in, so you can't really get that full stretch that you want with these flies. So again, range of motion, and just getting the muscle some tension throughout its range of motion. So that's why I'd rather prefer, if you're gonna do flies, do the ones that are on like the direct sides of you, far away, because then you have, on each side, it's coming far from the side, because you're bringing it inside. Give yourself a fist pump. And that one, you can get also a really good range of motion. But again, drive the elbows back, elbow wears behind you. As my old uh, throwing coach said, elbow the midget, and that really helps you get your back involved almost in any movements. You wanna elbow down on the off. Next up, we have the flies. So see, it's coming from the sides, and we're gonna go to give ourselves a fist bump. Uh, gonna do 10 to 15. I'm only doing like, Level three of like 20 on these stacks, so you can, I'm going pretty light. Or I'm just not that strong. So, we got the last set. We got set number quattro, four. Um, so we're gonna be, I had to think for a sec. And du trois quatre. Probably said that wrong, but that's French. So we're gonna do set of 17, and then we're gonna get into the last set of flies.
That was a lot harder than the last three sets. The last three sets, I promise they were better. But uh, we're gonna hop, let's hop right into the flies. Done. So number three is done, so we're gonna do Ooh. so number four. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, so this is gonna be arms. So surprise, surprise, we're doing arms again. This should be good. All right, so we're gonna be doing the arm superset. Um, so what we're doing with, change things up just slightly after the deload with my wrist, and also I wanna give a little anecdote to how this wrist injury kind of has been recovering. So. I was a bonehead, I'm bringing up the goblet squat, I didn't really catch the weight correctly, and then it just went So, that happened, and my wrist was, I don't know, issues with it. And then, tried to train through it, it wasn't getting any better. So, what ended up happening is I took a deload, really brought down the volume, tried to let it rest for a week, not really had too much like going on with it. Um, came back and it wasn't too much better. And that's pretty much this week. Now what I've been doing is just giving a lot of compression. So this is actually under the wrist joint. I'm just compressing around whatever this thing is called. My anatomy is just isn't that great. But just providing compression around the area when I'm doing the majority of my movements. And it's actually been getting a lot better. Maybe. Could be just doing a little active recovery, getting blood into the area. Could be the compression. Or it could just be the time. And the compression is enough to like not allow it to get any worse. So that's just my anecdote with this whole wrist injury. Be smart with your injuries. I tried taking a week off. First I tried training through it. Then I tried a week off. And now pretty much training through it again. But also being smart about it. Giving it the compression, which has actually been very useful for me. Um, so that's a little anecdote. So if you guys have um, injuries, those are three things to maybe try. Um, completely being off of it, training through it may not always be the smartest, but sometimes we're, we're gonna get little nicks and knacks. Sometimes you can train through the really small things. Um, and then the third thing was just having a little compression. So maybe just apply the compression and try training through it. If that doesn't work, give it a little time off. Um, but always be smart with your injuries. Um, that is just like how this went for me. Just wanna let you guys know that because I wanna be real with you guys. We're going through a prep. I'm gonna get beat up in like what? 30 weeks of training, little things come and go. And if you do any kind of athletic endeavor, you're probably gonna stub your toe at some point. You're probably gonna have achy knees at some point. It happens. But now we're gonna get back to the arms. So we're doing the single arm extensions. So we're gonna get here and again, range of motion, important. So taking a half step back, making sure we have tension. So we got pretty much fully stretched tricep and then fully extended tricep. To those and we're gonna walk over to the red dumbbells the special dumbbells gonna do standing hammer curls again hammer curls been feeling good for the wrist no pain with those
So we're gonna do that four or maybe five times. All right, so we just finished up the arm superset. We actually ended up doing five rounds. So that was biceps, triceps, and middle delts. Um, so now we're gonna do the final thing. Usually we'll do this if I have enough time, try to be more consistent with it. Changed it up from the previous training block, which was um, we were doing pull-ups, band pull-aparts, um, I think at some point leg raises, but we're switching that up to this time, we're gonna be doing um, band pull-aparts for the rear delts, trying to make sure that that little guy gets really juicy for the stage. And then we're also gonna be throwing in um, calf raises because I need help there. And we're gonna do the weighted crunch machine. So we're pretty much hitting calves, abs, and rear delts here. We're just gonna run through this as quick as possible. So we're gonna start this off with the band pull-aparts. And the way that I'm adjusting the tension, if I told you guys in the other ones, previous videos, you hold it at the edge, and how many times I wrap it around my hand. So that's one on each. So we have two wraps on the left, one wrap on the right, so that's three wraps. That's how I adjust the tension with the same band. So keep that in mind. I'm gonna do this for probably like 25 reps is what I'm shooting for, so 20 to 25. And then we'll get into the other two exercises, which will also be sets in the bounce. Now over to calf raises, the machine's open. All right, so we got 15 there, and now we're gonna do the weighted abs roller coaster machine. So it's hoist brand, so it moves with you. So we just finished up our calves, our abs, and yeah. damn, I got some short memory. Yeah, rear delts, that. But um, yeah, it was a great workout. We just got in some upper, got a pretty great pump having the refeed day yesterday, getting in all this volume, so I'm feeling great. Um, but that's gonna do it for today's workout. We've got another like 18 and a half weeks to go. Gonna get super shreddy, very excited. I'm feeling really lean, but I think from now, like dropping five pounds is gonna be as lean as I've ever been. We probably got a total like 18 or so pounds to go from here. So really pumped for this. Um, so that's gonna do it for the workout. We're gonna go get a thumbnail in the locker room or somewhere. And then um, like, comment, subscribe if you guys haven't already. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Keep it flexible. I'm out. Just lean back a little. There we go.